All right. Man. Why, just, can somebody explain to me why Netherrealm just can't be normal? No other fighting game does this. No other fighting game does this. Like, it, it's just, it's literal clown show at the moment. So there's new renders, right? Goes all the way across. There's actually quite a lot. Got to get through. <clears throat> Uh, and there's little bios for each of these characters, and you'll understand when I click on them, right? So, Fire God Liu Kang, again, goes completely against what Ed Boon is saying about, oh, it's it's not a sequel. Yeah, it is, dude. Just... <laughs> Come on, man. Liu Kang, having won control of the hourglass, Liu Kang restarted history. He neutralized the threats and dangers that had come before, creating a new era in which all beings would have the opportunity to find peace and a brand new race swap. What? But that piece is now threatened by enemy by an enemy that Liu Kang could never have anticipated. It will take all his wisdom and experience to save not only Earthrealm but all of reality. Yeah, the enemy will be himself. I did a video about it. Ten bucks, right? That um he he is the Dragon King. Right? He is the Dragon King. Or he is descent here we go, here's another line. He is descendant from the Dragon King. Grandmaster of the Lin Kuei, Sub-Zero. As Liu Kuei, uh, Lin Kuei's Grandmaster, Sub-Zero leads his ancient warrior clan in the defense of Earthrealm for external threats. For centuries, it's been their solemn task. But Earthrealm hasn't been threatened in generations, and Sub-Zero sees no point in limiting his clan to preparing for dangers that may never come. Under his leadership, the Lin Kuei will come out of the shadows and fight for its place as one of Earthrealm's greatest nations. Scorpion, revered Lin Kuei warrior. Yeah, yeah, we, we all had a feeling about this, man. No other fighting game does this. No other fighting game literally retcons their characters. So, like... <laughs> oh, but, you know, it just shakes things up. No, shut up. It doesn't shake things up. You can shake things up by having an established character. Because what's going to happen... It's going to be real easy, because this bio proves it. Let me read it, and I'll explain. Like his cherished father, Scorpion is dedicated to the Lin Kuei and its defense of Earthrealm. Uh, when his father died, Scorpion was bereft. Though he took pride in knowing that his brother, Sub-Zero, would succeed their father as the Lin Kuei's Grand Master. But Sub-Zero's unprecedented moves to cast off the Lin Kuei's traditional duties have frozen Scorpion's enthusiasm. He fears that he may one day have to battle his brother for control of Lin Kuei's legacy. So, have we done away completely with the Shirai Ryu? Is this, is this Japan erasing? Is it? We just got rid of all Japan now? No, no Shirai Ryu, he's just his, his actual brother. <laughs> oh, you can't make this up. Right, not to mention, like, they got different they got different outfits, yeah? So, okay, all right. So, oh, you can argue. Uh, sh sure, it's rank, right? You know, the color's rank. I'll give you that. But here's the problem, right? I reckon this story is going to probably go in one direction, and that will be that regardless of what this clown has done, the rivalries and the way that they have all ended up becoming who they were in the actual normal storyline will end up becoming what actually happened in the normal storyline. This is fiction. This is this is just Ed Boon giving his writers going, you know what, uh, make me a Tumblr story, please. Oh, my God. Princess of Outworld, Katana. Katana has one purpose in life, to aid and protect her older sister, Melina, as she prepares to rule Outworld one day. The steady-handed uh, Katana ignores the calls of those who advocate that she should replace her impulsive sister as heir. Instead, Katana will defend the realm by fighting to make Melina the best Empress possible. She will also fight to hide the dark secret that could end her sister's reign before it begins. 
Now, yeah, we, we know like it's it's an infection or, or some sort of blood disorder or whatever, right? But is she not being railed by Luke Hang no more? Is that not a, is that not a thing now? Right? Just asking. So here's here's a possible story arc for this that Shao Khan or Shao, which apparently he's going to be referred to, maybe. Could, ne could end up being the one that convinces Katana to become ruler by, you know, and he could be a good guy. That'd be really weird. Um, and instead of like Shao Kahn, I'm, I'm just calling him Shao Kahn. You just have to deal with it, right? Instead of Shao Kahn banging Sindel, right, he and Katana actually hook up and overthrow Melina, who by that stage has gone, right? So this is what I mean, like some of these storylines are still re relatively the same, like Cage. Like many stars before him, Johnny Cage became addicted to his fame. He came to measure his self-worth by his fans' adoration and praise on him in social media. But with his with his star now fading, uh, Johnny is fighting an uphill battle to remain relevant. He joins Liu Kang's Earthrealm champions, hoping it will provide his career and his fame a desperately needed boost. Can somebody explain to me how this is different? It's not. This is the problem with retcons. You change it for some, you don't for others, and people are gonna sit there and go, yeah, but, like, if this is all brand new and Liu Kang has the power to completely change people's family lineage, wipe out Japan, race change Raiden, turn Goro into, I like what people have said about Goro's skin color because it matches the movie, but he's still a midget, right? Uh, Kenshi Takahashi, a uh, restorer of his family's name, uh, once uh, one of ancient Japan's most honored families. The Takahashis were decimated in battle. So, there's Japan for you. There's Japan. Is Japan decimated completely too? Who knows? <laughs> uh... Uh, they lost everything, including the emblem of their power, their revered sword, Sento. Uh, those who survived joined the Bakuto, uh, a prede predecessor of the Yakuza, uh, for its protection. Five centuries later, Kenshi is raised on the stories of his ancient family's exploits. Protesting his corrupt Yakuza life, he pines to free the Takahashi from the Yakuza's grasp and restore their name. But for his family to follow him, Kenshi must first fight to prove that he can lead. His first battle is to find and retrieve Sento. So that sounds fine. I mean, you know, I've always liked Kenshi as a character. I think he's one of the best introduction characters into the 3D era. Probably one of the best. Amazing. Now, youthful warrior with his dreams of glory, Kung Lao. Born and raised in the village of Feng Zhuan, Feng Jian, Jian, Feng Jian, Kung Lao has spent his life tolling in the fields. It has been an honorable life, if not a glorious one. Uh, Kung Lao's greatest fear is that his life will amount to nothing. He prays fervently that he will be called to do something bigger. Well, that is better already than the laughing stock that he has become. Being Liu Kang's, like, clown sidekick joke is getting old. Um, his prayers are answered when he is asked to join the champions of Earthrealm as a warrior fighting for its honor. Kung Lao knows that his victories will, long be, will be long remembered. Now, again... Now, reading this bio could be the great Kung Lao. Right? See, we don't know 100% yet if this story is actually going to be the first Mortal Kombat tournament. And that the reason why Liu Kang visited Kung Lao in the temple back in the Yegade days, right, is because he was actually contacting the original Kung Lao. Right? Because he knew he would be champion. Okay. Now, I'd be fine with that. To be honest, to be honest, it'd be really good to have a new champion. I'd be fully down with Kung Lao um, being the, the champion of this particular game. Because we heard all about him growing up. You know, he was the great Kung Lao, you know, defeated by Goro, all this sort of stuff. You know, I'd love to see that story explored. This gives me a little bit of hope that they might still do that. Melina, heir to the Outworld throne. Uh, born mere seconds ahead of her twin sister. Uh, 
Melina is the rightful heir to Outworld's throne, but even so, there are those who distrust Melina's impulsiveness. They whisper that Katana, with her steadier hand, should replace Melina as heir to the throne. As Melina fights for legitimacy, she hides a horrible secret. She is infected with the dreaded and lethal Takata block disease. Uh, target disease, sorry. Uh, with her affliction found out, Melina will be forced into battle to save her throne. Now, this will go one of two ways. Again, she'll end up being the bad guy anyway. Or somehow they figure out a cure. Kind of funny, isn't it? How Liu Kang can race swap, wipe out Japan, almost. Now, Kenshi's still around, so I suppose Japan's still there. Right? Mess up bloodlines and make people brothers when they weren't brothers before. But he can't cure Melina? Like, th this clown, like, redid the timeline. And he's like, oh, hang on, some of these people are still the same. <laughs> Please get better writers. Champion of Earthrealm, Raiden. Uh, in the village of Feng Jian, Raiden was known for his kindness uh, and his charity. He was happy to spend his days. Uh, hang on. This is really interesting. I, I gotta. I'm just checking something here for a sec. This is really interesting. The way this is worded. Wow, that is interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Now let me read, and I'll explain. In the village of Feng Zhuan, Feng Jian, Feng, Feng, <laughs> FJ, Raiden was known for his kindness and his charity. He was happy to spend his days tending to the fields as well as to his friends and family. So when he is asked to leave Feng Jian and become one of Earthrealm's champions, Raiden hesitates, but he soon realizes that to best serve his village, he must join them. As threats to Earthrealm mount, Raiden must mature into the great warrior that Liu Kang knows he can be. Now, what I want to know is, why does it say, was? Raiden was known. Is that a precursor? Is that, is that, is that a precursor to, um, uh, him changing into the Thunder God that we all know? See, I've said this before. Lou, clown, who, who's done all this stuff to try and perf to to create this perfect reality, which is not going that way, will probably end up being the bad guy. And then at the last hour, he'll pull a Darth Vader, you know, he'll find the good side, and then he'll bestow the lightning powers or whatever on Raiden. Although Raiden has lightning powers in this, you know what I'm saying? When I say this shit out loud, you know, and it just, it just sounds ridiculous. It sounds like somebody drew this in crayon on a wall and decided to put it in a story. Some of this sounds good, like, and, and other stuff we just have to accept. Oh, he's just the brother. He just has, like, like, where? What does it say for Luke? Having one control of the hourglass restarted history. It neutralized the threats and dangers that had come before. So, is that as vague as it's going to be at the moment? Are we going to get more, con hopefully we'll get more context. But, like, we've had a race change. We've had two completely different Asian ninja clans now essentially be one the shirai ryu is is banished although what's probably going to happen is that scorpion will probably get outcast um or and or leave you know because of the way sub-zero is and then you know he'll start he'll run to japan and start the shirai ryu just like the original Anyway, <laughs> I'm just I'm just really curious. It's not long now till we find out how this all plays out, but I'm really curious. Anyway, catch you next time.